Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video on history through tanks. Today we're going to be talking about one of the first tanks you get to play with in Armored Warfare called PT-76. This is a Soviet tank and PT stands for Plavayishi tank which means uh, swimming tank. It literally just means that because this is a, uh, a tank that was meant for reconnaissance but also had fire support role and was able to swim in the water. Basically it was an amphibious tank. And so today we're going to be using uh, Armored Warfare but also a game called War Game Red Dragon to talk about the importance of this tank in history and how it changed history around the world and how it influenced a creation of a nation. And welcome to What The Math. And so this is PT-76, a first tank that you get to play with in the game. And you won't really be spending too much time with this tank because within a few missions you'll be able to upgrade to the next tank. But nevertheless, it's important to talk about the uh, influence this, this tank had on the history of the world. So this tank was actually developed in early 50s and this was as a result of the resurrection of the light tank uh, concept in the, United, uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, and basically the main goal for this tank was to become uh, an armored reconnaissance unit. And because of its recon role, uh, the Soviets decided that it needed to be able to move not only on the ground but also in the water. So they actually uh, created this tank with the primary role of being an amphibious vehicle. In other words, it was able to transverse water and was able to swim in the water using two jet propellers in the back of the tank. Now even though this is quite an old tank, uh, it's still actually used in some uh, countries around the world and even Russia today uses this tank for some of its amphibious missions because it was actually a very successful design and even though as a tank it's not particularly useful but as an amphib amphibious vehicle it's actually really really good. Now the 76 in its name refers to its cannon and this is a 76 millimeter cannon that was basically similar to the ones used on some of the World War II tanks and here uh, this cannon didn't really have particularly powerful armament or anything but it was still able to destroy a lot of tanks at a distance of about 1.5 kilometers or about one mile. And this of course was meant for its support role not as much as a assault role so its cannon was mostly used as, as a support for the advance of the main force. And in total about 5,000 models were actually produced uh, and about 2,000 were exported to other countries and over 25 countries used this tank in some countries like for example North Korea still use it today with certain modifications. When this tank was just introduced its main missions were not only reconnaissance but also water crossing and specifically this was the main operational vehicle for the um, Soviet uh, naval forces and the Soviet marines as well. But this tank was actually quite important for the Vietnamese, specifically North Vietnamese, uh, during the Vietnam War because uh, along with T-54 and, and also T-55, this was uh, actually the main tank for the North Vietnamese forces. And during their fight against the Americans and against the South Vietnamese, they were facing uh, much more powerful tanks such as for example M-48 and was still quite successful at conquering the land. But today we're not going to be actually talking about the Vietnam War because I wanted to use another tank for that particular conflict. Today we're actually going to be talking about a war that many of you may not be aware of, specifically the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. Because during that war, this was the main attack vehicle that India used against Pakistan and they were facing quite a similar tank from the United States called M24 Chaffee. And both of these were considered to be light tanks. M24 Chaffee was slightly more armored and had a relatively good cannon as well and it was also much faster than uh, PT-76. But surprisingly, even when faced with a much larger M24 force, PT-76 was able to defeat quite a lot of them. So they were going to be talking about this particular uh, part of history and this specific battle. And the battle I'm referring to is known in India as Battle of Garipur. This was where um, an Indian army uh, used 14 PT-76 to try to um, attack a much larger Pakistani force and they were actually quite successful. So we're going to be using a game called War Game Red Dragon to try to uh, recreate this battle. It's obviously not as realistic as it was in real life but here I'm, I'm going to have my PT-76s uh, facing a much much larger M24 force and just like in the real battle and I'm referring to Battle of Garipur, 
the Pakistani force here is going to have more tanks. They're also going to have three F-86 Sabres, and these are the airplanes they used that were actually uh, quite successful at trying to destroy the Indian tanks. And they're also going to have infantry uh, brigades uh, with anti-tank weapons. On the Indian side, we're going to have a few anti-tank weapons, and we're also going to have uh, only one brigade of PT-76 tanks. But we're also going to have one airplane because yeah, during the battle, Indian Air Force actually joined in and was able to defeat the F-86 Sabres. But the airplane they used is not available in this game. So I'm going to be using MiG-29, which will actually help me with uh, F-86 Sabres. But just to make this a little bit more equalized, I'm only going to give myself one airplane while they actually have three airplanes. But before we talk about this battle specifically, let's actually talk about the reasons for it and what exactly happened in 1971. So let's go back a few years and let's actually talk about uh, right after 1947 when the British Empire created two states. It, it created India and it created Pakistan which was meant for both the Hindu and the um, Muslim populations to live peacefully uh, separately from each other and this was meant to prevent a lot of violence. Now uh, the way it was made it was that the, you had a large Indian country and then you had Pakistan that was separated into two different parts. One was called West Pakistan and one was called East Pakistan. But the way it happened is that Pakistan actually had uh, its much smaller Urdu population control the much larger Bengali pop population in the east. So both West and East Pakistan was actually were actually controlled by the same political party. And um, Urdu was made the main language for both countries, even though in the east uh, most people actually spoke Bengali. So a lot of the Bengali population in the east became highly prosecuted, they became oppressed, they were actually uh, not represented well in politics and so even though there were just as many of them as the Urdu speakers they felt that the Urdu speakers or specifically the West Pakistani were basically controlling both countries and and were essentially very unfair to the Bengali people and as a result of all of this there was something called Bangladesh uh, War of Independence which basically was stemmed from the fact that a lot of the eastern uh, Pakistani people were felt not only persecuted but they actually started being violated as there was actually a huge operation called Operation Searchlight which was initiated by West Pakistan to try to suppress all of the resistance in the east and as a result of this many people were uh, killed, many people were actually raped and a lot of the Bengali civilians and a lot of the uh, minorities had to flee East Pakistan into India and there was a huge influx of refugees from East Pakistan into India. Now today in Bangladesh and in India but not in, in Pakistan this was actually known as the 1971 Bangladesh genocide. Many scholars actually do agree that this was a genocide because up to a million people possibly even more than a million people were, were killed by the West Pakistani forces. But we're not going to be discussing this and we're not going to be debating whether it was a genocide or not. The fact remains though that a lot of the Bengali people were killed during that period and as a result uh, they began their, their liberation war. And even though India officially didn't support the East Pakistan just yet, uh, at the same time as the Operation Searchlight, Pakistani decided to initiate a preemptive strike against India uh, from the West Pakistan and they actually destroyed quite a lot of air, um, Indian airplanes and basically started an assault on India. And this was of course an ongoing conflict between India and Pakistan going many many years back where they actually had a previous war that we'll talk about in one of the future videos. And so the conflict really started with the Bangladesh Liberation War and uh, as India actually joined in and started helping East Pakistan, uh, West Pakistan decided to also attack them from the west so this was a two-front war one was uh, very far in the east uh, for India that is and one was uh, on the in the northwest on the border with Pakistan but ironically this war only lasted for 13 days because uh, Pakistan ended up being completely annihilated they've lost quite a lot of people they've lost uh, two uh, destroyers they lost a submarine they lost many many smaller ships They've even lost up to 94 aircraft and uh, ended up losing quite a lot of military personnel as well because India responded quite professionally using a very organized uh, plan of operation and in the west they were able to defeat them quite quickly and in the east they've essentially started a lot of smaller scale engagement using a lot of Soviet equ equipment that uh, they purchased from the Soviet Union. So they had quite a lot of uh, Soviet tanks including T-55 and quite a lot of PT-76 as well. 
So here India decided to adapt a new strategy where they would actually advance quickly uh, using several assault positions and they would then hold the territory preventing a counter assault. And so in a sense this was the so-called blitzkrieg technique where you advance with tanks and with a lot of assault forces quickly and then try to hold your position. India also was able to exploit a lot of uh, Pakistani's weaknesses and they were able to outmaneuver them as well. And because of this quick assault which was actually kind of reminiscent of the assault of Germany on Poland in 1939, uh, Pakistan was faced with tremendous losses on both uh, fronts and they actually capitulated after only 13 days. And one of the biggest battles was this battle right here called Battle of Garipur. So here um, the smaller Indian force decided that it was time for them to take um, a village called Garipur. And this was an important village because it was at the crossroads of an important highway and this would basically secure a very important logistic location for whoever held the position. Now at this point it was held by West Pakistan and so India decided to use its uh, Punjabi battalion supported by 14 of PT-76 tanks and uh, some cavalry units and they wanted to move in and use an element of a surprise to try to attack and destroy the Pakistani forces but they were actually alerted uh, and uh, knew that the attack was coming so the Pakistani forces were, pre were prepared. They were equipped with M24 tanks or light tanks that is and uh, had a much much larger number of forces and tanks. But the Punjab battalion that was attacking them was known for its bravery and for its morale. So they actually uh, were able to cut their way through the Pakistani forces and then dug in preparing for the counterattack. They then sent their tanks uh, straight uh, ahead of the Pakistani force and basically charged them like you would with horses and uh, wanted to decimate the Pakistani tanks before the counterattack uh, uh, came to them. And they also got lucky that there was actually fog and poor visibility on that day and because of that the Pakistani forces were unable to see where the attack was coming from. So the PT-76 tanks that had quite a large gun compared to the M24 tanks were able to quite quickly decimate the Pakistani forces. And so within one day they were able to destroy 11 of the Pakistani M24 tanks and were even able to capture three that they also used against the Pakistani later. However, they did lose some tanks as well. They've lost uh, six, uh, six of their own tanks, mostly due to the anti-tank rifles that the Pakistani had that were, they were able to use against the PT-76 tanks, which unfortunately don't have much armor. They're actually much lightly more armored than M24 tanks. And uh, even though the Pakistani were being repelled, they decided to uh, call in their air force. And so they've called in three F-86 Sabres. And these were the American aircraft. And uh, they called them in for close air supports because they wanted to use some rocket fire on the uh, Indian positions. But I the Indian Air Force was ready for this attack. So they've actually sent their own aircraft. And even though I don't have this in this game, these aircrafts were called Fallen Gnats. And these were actually uh, British aircraft that were not even meant for battle. They're actually uh, training aircraft that uh, the Indians and uh, the British were using for training their jet pilots. But nevertheless, during the Indian-Pakistani war, in both in 1965 and in 1971, they shot down quite a lot of the Pakistani airplane and were able to actually outperform them in the air as well. And in this battle as well, they were able to shoot down all of the Sabres without losing any of their own craft and were then able to uh, give air support to the Indian forces. Now, all of these battles, including this one, were complete victory for India and for East Pakistan. And as a result of this, they were able to force Pakistan to essentially capitulate and to surrender. And although in the West, Pakistan was still quite strong and was able to uh, defend itself quite valiantly, in the East, uh, this was the end of the East possessions of Pakistan and resulted in the independence of Bangladesh. So this is how Bangladesh was born. It was born through blood and tears and sweat. And the so-called People's Republic of Bangladesh was essentially born uh, that year after this, this battle and after this 13-day uh, long war. And because Bengali culture was so much different from the Pakistani culture, they uh, basically re-established their own cultural supremacy and a lot of the West Pakistani had to go back to their country because they would not be able to survive in this country that was now uh, very angry at, at Pakistan and had its own identity. But nevertheless, even after the liberation, Bangladesh was still not really set for its own independence yet and the resulting state was 
enduring a lot of poverty, a lot of famine. There was a lot of uh, military coup, uh, coup d'etat, and uh, uh, the only true democracy came to fruition only in 1991. So uh, this country still had about 20 more years of uh, volatile political uh, situation. But it was through PT-76 and its 76mm uh, cannon that uh, Bangladesh was able to gain this independence, was able to overpower Pakistani forces, and of course, with help uh, from India and their own battalion called Mitro Bahini, they were able to create the republic that they have today. And today, the, uh, Bangladesh is actually known as one of the few countries that may actually become one of the future uh, economic superpowers. They're known as Next 11 Emerging Economy. They're also part of the, or actually, they are the largest peacekeeping force in the United Nations. So they have a lot of peacekeepers uh, that they provide to you, to the United Nation. And even though they're still a developing country, they're growing really fast. And today they're on the way to some great things in the future. And of course, this is how PT-76 influenced the creation of this country and how it changed the history of the world. So even though it's a small tank with very thin armor, and was really meant for reconnaissance. In many countries, it was used as the main tank and actually was able to change the history of the world. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe, check out some of the other videos I posted, and also share this video with your friends and your family. If you're a history buff, there's more videos coming in the future. And usually there's going to be at least one of these a week. Thank you so much for watching Game Leader, and bye-bye.